Hey, it's Jennifer. I wanted to make this video because recently I've had so many caregivers asking why their loved one has dementia, even though they can remember so much about things from the past. I want to start with this. First in, last out. So if you tell me your loved one can't have dementia because they have all of this memory about things from their past, this is what I need you to remember. I'll explain why in a few minutes. To start, I need you to know that memory is not just one process in the brain. It's a system. So storing it, it stores information by rearranging the connections that it has with one another. So people with dementia, specifically Alzheimer's disease, they have trouble with their short-term memory. And we store these short-term memories in the hippocampus, which is an area that's really deep down in the brain. That's where they're made. And so these short-term memories can eventually be transferred to the long-term memory by sending them to the brain storage bank in a part of the brain called the neocortex. And the neocortex is where we have decision-making skills and perception. That's where our language centers are stored. And it's also where we have our motor commands. Now, this neocortex is part of the outermost layer of our brain. And this is the part that has grown exponentially through evolution. How do we get these short-term memories sent to this neocortex or this outermost part of the brain to get stored as long-term memories? Well, it's done through repeated stimulation. So the more that you recall a memory, the stronger that it becomes. You can think of it like this. Think about a wide open field and you decide that you want to make a path in this field from one side to the other. Now, on the first time that you walk this path, you're not going to be able to tell where you went. But over time, you're going to find that path that you made really easily, right? The grass is going to be laid down. There may even be a little bit of a dirt path that you have made because you've done it over and over and over again. Just like with memory, the more that you think about things, the more that you bring them back and talk about them in your life, the stronger that they're going to become. So with Alzheimer's disease, the hippocampus is one of the first areas of the brain to be affected. So this makes it very difficult to process and store this new information. And if it can't store the information, then that information is never sent to the brain storage bank, so no memory can be formed. Now let's go back to this first in and last out phrase. When we talk about memory and how it's stored, we can think about memory as kind of a tier. All right, think about a multi-layer cake. So you have the frosting and the first, the sprinkles that are on top. These are the memories that you've, that you've made or that your loved one has made in the last six months or the last year or five years, right? So these fresh memories, they haven't made that dirt path. They haven't, they haven't had to recall those memories very much. And so they're going to be the first ones to leave. But those memories that they have made 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 years ago, the ones that are at the bottom of this cake, the bottom of this tier, those are the ones that they're going to be able to remember a lot easier and those are the, going to be the ones that they talk about to you. Now I also need you to know that when there is an emotional attachment to a memory, a really strong emotional tie to a memory, then that memory stays even stronger. So even if a memory is say 30 years old versus a 50 year old memory but there's a really strong emotional attachment to that 30 year old memory, it may stay even if that 50 year old memory fades a little bit before. So these emotional attachments can be good and bad, right? So it can be childhood or adult trauma. It can be the, the wedding day. It can be the birth of a child. It can be a whole bunch of different things, but those attachments that are made are going to make that memory really strong in the brain. Now, unfortunately with dementia, it's a progressive disease. So this tear that's made, over time, even the long memories, even the memories that happened 50, 60, 70 years ago, those are also going to eventually fade, which is why your loved one may no longer remember your name, even though you were their firstborn. So when you're caring for someone with Alzheimer's, you have to learn how to put yourself into their reality and put your reality aside. You've got to get on board with theirs because they only have so much that they can remember. 
So it's important to do this and it's called validation therapy. I'm sure that you do it without even thinking about it at a certain point. So it's kind of the opposite of what's called orientation therapy that you might do really early on in dementia where you try to, try to keep them oriented to what's going on in the world around them. When it gets into the moderate and later stages, you're just lucky to be able to have a conversation with them. And so when you jump into their world, when you, when you get into their level and what they're thinking of and what they remember, it helps them trust you more. It, it builds empathy with you and it can make your loved one feel so much more relaxed. You're able to help them a lot more as a caregiver. They're gonna trust you when you ask them that, when you ask them to take a shower. They're gonna trust you when they say it's time to go to the doctor's office. If, you're, if you always push back and you try to argue with them all the time, there's that emotional tie. They may remember that, so they may be a lot more unwilling to do things with you after a certain amount of time. So, the next time that your loved one remembers something that happened years ago, it doesn't mean their brain is fine, and it doesn't mean they don't have dementia, but it does mean that you still get to share that memory with them. Caregivers, did you know that there are different kinds of short-term and long-term memories? Check out this video to learn what other kind of memories your brain stores and how you use it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back again soon to help you continue cracking the code.